All right. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 7 and 23. Ecclesiastes in the pocket of 7 and 23. So, has thou children? You have children? Instruct them and bow down their, their neck from their youth. Bow down their neck. That's respect from their youth. You know, just like when I come up, you did something bad, you got whooped. You got a whooping. But now, they call that child abuse. That's why the children running rapid. That's why it says, as thou children, instruct them. You gotta instruct the children. Tell them what to do. What it say? Fools hate instruction. So instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. Bow down their neck means they, they humble. Humble they humble them from their youth. Has thou daughters? You got daughters, have a care of their body. Have got a care of their body. Got to show them how to take care of their body. Young girls don't know how to take care of their body because nobody teaches them how to take care of their bodies. They have care of their body and make sure that they're not going out there doing anything. Period. And show not thyself cheerful toward them. You know? Say, show not thyself cheerful toward them. You got to be stern. That's what he's telling you. You got to be stern with them. I mean, it's a time and place for everything, but the majority of the time you cheerful with them, they're going to just take advantage of you. Think you soft. Think you, you know, they can do whatever they want to do. Say, marry thy daughter, and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. You know, that means it's going to be hard. Say, marry your daughter, and you, and you have performed a weighty matter. Something that's you know, could be hard on you. You know, you have daughters, you want to see them get married to a righteous man. But give her to a man of understanding. There it is. Give it to a man of understanding. That's why Proverbs, hold that, stay there. Proverbs 4 and 7, for all of us. A man of understanding, right? It says, Wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. It's the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. See? Exalt her. And she shall provoke, promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. You embrace this wisdom, this proper application of knowledge of the Most High's word. That's why it says, verse 25 of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. But give her to a man of understanding. Give her to a man of understanding. That means she couldn't just go out there and get whoever she wanted. Give her, but give her to a man of understanding. If the man have understanding, we didn't have to give her to him. So we, sometime it was decided who she was going to marry. It will be a man that his father and mother taught their son these laws had to command us. How to be a righteous man. How to have understanding. Of this Bible. I mean, you look at all the understanding that you have in this world is so backwards. You know, a lot of men, a lot of us that live today, if we lived back in the day, they would love for their daughters to have a man of understanding, to be able to teach her how to be righteous before the Most High, our power, knowing that He's only our power. But he's looking at looking to the left to Satan and want, her, want him to be the power in these days. And don't even realize it. Don't even realize it. Thinking a righteous man going to think the same way as them. Not when you off. Because you got to back all this up by the scriptures. As it is written. 
So he married thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. But give her to a man of understanding. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? You have a wife, man, after your mind? Forsake her not. But give not thyself over to a light woman. So you got a woman that's after your mind. Say, don't, don't, don't forsake her. This is beautiful. Wonderful. Marvelous. But give her, excuse me, but give not thyself, don't give yourself over to a light woman. Airhead. Somebody I don't want to deal with understanding. They don't want to be taught. So don't give your mind over to or your life over to a woman that's an airhead. That's other words, that's what we say. Air, light, air is what's lighter than air. Nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he said, don't give your self over to a woman that's not wanting to observe your mind as a man. The intelligence that you have as a man in knowing these scriptures and the way to salvation. He says, as thou a wife after thy mind, you got a wife after your mind that want to learn from you, be subject to you in righteousness, in loving her and compassion with her, enjoying her as she enjoy you. Ain't no friction in this. Most I ain't the author of confusion. Remember that. Remember that. But of peace. A woman that's after your mind, you have peace. And there's no struggle, it's not confusion. Because order without chaos, order or they want order with chaos. I mean, without order is chaos. It's order without chaos. Because everything will be in order. This is what works. Simple, it's not hard. Proverbs 31 and 3. Proverbs 31 and 3. Give not thy strength unto women. Hear that? It said, Give not thy strength unto women. Nor thy ways, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Shoot. <laughs> and that's real, that's real talk there. You know, there's a, a, a story in the scriptures where it was asking what was the most powerful. Wine, the king, or the truth in women. Three things was acts. You know what one? The truth, of course, was number one. But what was next? Women. There's some more wine, you know. You, you, you just you have to see what it says. You know, that's why I said, don't give thy not, not thy strength to women, because women destroyed kings before. Say, whoa, how did that happen? Yeah. Women have destroyed kings. I mean, to tell you how she come in the room and the king see her continence. If it's, if it's kind of down, then he's down. She upsided, then he's excited. Especially if he really love her, you know. See how she took the king's crown off his head and put it on her on her head and hit the king, smacked him on his jaw, and everything is everything. <laughs> What's more powerful? I mean, that's why he say, 
Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. What is it talking about? Women have destroyed kings. You know, there was a movie, uh, I think it was called 300. And the armies came up and was talking to this guy and his wife was right there. And she said something. And he looked like, who is this? That's this woman speaking. And one men are talking. And he might kicked him to the hole. Destroyed him. <laughs> Destroyed him. Many men they in jail behind women. A woman. A woman, they in jail. A woman with another man. Why they in jail? It went on to someone else. And they doing time behind taking up for this woman or dealing with, you know, certain things that they couldn't get out of because they gave their strength to a woman. That's why the scriptures is true. Scriptures is real. Scriptures is honest and sincere. Remember what we just read in Proverbs 30 and 5, every word of the most high is pure. So you either accept it or don't accept it. I accept it. Proverbs 12 and 4. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. It, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh her ashamed, a woman that make her man ashamed, is as rottenness in his bones. Hear that? A woman that will bring shame to you is like rottenness to the bone. Wow. Some you know because it's, it's, it reminds me of go to Hebrews four and twelve. I mean, a shameful woman, a woman that brings shame to you, is like rottenness to the bone. It's like man, that's like cancer. That's full fledged. Nothing you can do about it. Just eating you to bone cancer. Just eating you up. What else is Hebrews 4 and 12? For the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. A sword you can cut this way and that way. If you swing this way, you cut. You swing that way, you cutting. That's the word of the most high. Quick. It's quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. And there's a marrow is the bone. Inside the bone, the middle of the bone. The body asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is the center of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So let's look at it. Proverbs 12 and 4. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. I Man, he make him feel like a king. This virtuous woman, she knowing what to do to make him feel like a king. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. It's not confusing. But she that make him ashamed, she's not virtuous. If she make you make your husband ashamed, is as rottenness in his bones. 
You got the word flowing through you. It's like it, 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 it can go get just, just rottenness to your bone because it's contrary to the word of the most high. Just like rottenness to your bone, like you had bone cancer just eating you up. Or that scripture cockeye when you got the flesh eating disease eating you from the inside out. That staph infection and so forth. Rottenness to his bone. A woman that make her man ashamed is as rottenness to his bone. But a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. A crown to her husband. Making him feel like a king. That's why I go to Ecclesiastes 26 and 1. It says, blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. For the number of his days shall be double. Wow. It says, blessed is a man that have a virtuous wife. For the number of his days shall be double. So you don't have a virtuous woman. Your days could be short. Shortened. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. So, this is what the world needs to know. Because everything is opposite of what we're reading here and what we have been reading. Because it's like, in the world, it's a virtuous man rejoices her, his wife. But the word says a virtuous woman rejoices her husband, and as he's rejoiced, then he's gonna rejoice her. Man, we gotta go through a lot being born in this world as a so-called black man, an Israelite man. Gotta go through a lot. When everything's against you, and your own woman's against you, that's Man, that's even double. You still are getting a double. But a virtuous woman rejoices her husband and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. You know? So, a woman that's not virtuous, he can't fulfill his life in peace. And the Mashiach already said he's going to give you this peace. Most I say he's going to give you this peace. Not of the world. The world give it. That's why you have to have this peace that Amashek Abishai said you're going to give us that a woman can't give you. She can't give you that peace. When you got to go into it, you, you go into it, she can't give you that peace because the world cannot give it to you. His peace, special peace from the Most High and Amashek Abishai because they won, they agree. So it's all going to come from the Most High. Their order. A good wife is a good portion which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the most high. See? You fear the most high and that woman going to get in order with you. Or you don't fear the most high then she's going to be out of order. You know, it's like when you, when you look at what it takes to to be in order, this virtuous woman, she's going to be doing what it takes to be in order. Man, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living power because the only thing people realize that the Most High will get you. He will get you. Look, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And we're talking about order. It says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Hamashiach Yahushai. So Hamashiach Yahushai is the head of man. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Mashiach is the most high. That's order. 
So Mashiach Yahushua's over the man, the man's over the woman, and the Most High is over a Mashiach. So that's the order. That's how this goes down. Proverbs 30 and 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. A woman that will lay with another man and she's married to a man. She eateth and wipe of her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. Say, I ain't done anything. You don't see me. She eateth food and wipe her mouth like take a nap and wipe her mouth. And say, I have done no wickedness. So what is she? She a liar. She a lie. Let you know she will lie. If she's a, she's already committed adultery, she's gonna lay with another man. And she like she ain't done anything. She a lie, right? She a liar. And Revelation 22, the last book of the Bible, Revelation 22, 15 says this. For without, this is without the inheritance, the kingdom. That the Most High already prepared for us, Israelites. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Now go on to the kingdom. Get it twisted. Specific. Proverbs 30 and 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth. And wipe up her mouth and said, I have done no wickedness. I ain't did nothing wrong. Can't prove it. Nobody see me laying there with nobody. But the most high see everything. This eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Beholding all the ways of all of us. Everything that's being done. He sees it. That's so why we got to watch ourselves because, you know, and then, in this world, a woman will say, oh, I ain't commit adultery. She married, but then she go out and get with another woman. And still don't know that. That's still wickedness, man. That's, go to uh, <laughs> Romans, the first chapter. In verse 26. For this cause... Romans 1 and 26. For this cause, the most I gave them up unto vile affections. Vile affections. That's nasty, filthy, make nasty affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. I mean, women with women. That's what it's talking about. And likewise, also the men to prove it. Let's talk about women and women. Women with women. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another. Come on. Men with men. Men with men. This is the New Testament. That's women with women that change the natural use into that which is against nature. A woman being with a woman. And it's 20, verse 27 proves it's talking about a woman with a woman. And verse here, in verse 27, proves it's talking about men with men. Because it's saying it. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was me. It's wrong. If all you just say, oh, that's they're doing it, and you hanging out with them, and you accept it. Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of the Most High, which Leviticus 20 and 13 says, for man lie with mankind, if he sell a woman, both of them have committed abomination, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of the Most High, for what we just read, Leviticus 20 and 13, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. That's what it says. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. See? They might not be doing the same thing that they're doing, but you have pleasure in them that do them. You deserve death too. That's what it's saying there. Every word of the most high is pure. Yeah. 
Romans 2 and 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before the most high, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Got to do the law. Repent. Everybody have opportunity to repent, change. Come out of that. You know, everybody have all these things that you're doing. We just, that just come up, but you got all type of things that is against the laws of the most high. You got to repent. Come out of it. Before it's too late. Proverbs 18 and 22. Proverbs 18 and 22. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain a favor of the most high. See, you find a wife, especially a virtuous wife, you find a good thing and, ob and obtain a favor of the most high. That's beautiful. But you got, she has to be seasoned in the way that she should be in this truth. And following, you know, just say the most high, as it is written. Go to Ecclesiastes 26 and 20. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession, find a good wife, do all the field, the field represents the world, sow it with thine own seed, sow it with thine own seed. Trust it in the goodness of thy stock. See, so thy race, race is in the Bible. So it says, so it means, you know, that's why we always talk about the seed come from the man. So this is what he's saying. When you find a fruitful possession through all the field, a woman that can have children, so with thine own seed. The seed is the sperm of copulation. Trust in thy goodness of thy stock, of, of your lineage, where you, who you, where you come from. Yo daddy's daddy's daddy and so forth. So thy race, see? That man, when he sow a seed into a woman, bringing forth the continuance of your race, so that your race, which thou leavest, shall be magnified, having the confidence of their good descent. From who you came from. From what? That seed. Of the man. He tell you in, in, in Proverbs 17 and 14 that in a man's stomach are children. Most I put them there. Verse 26. A woman that honor of her husband shall be judged wise of all. But she that dishonor of him in her pride, you know, you just honor your man. Women, you prideful. And her pride shall be counted unrighteous of all. Man. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted unrighteous of all. You know, you see, women, you know, having that pride. And just honoring her man, even on the, in the street, doing this. A righteous man gonna look at that as unrighteous, but the world will look at it like they're gonna jump in it when she's counted unrighteous of all. But she be in her pride. And that's what they're teaching the younger generation more and more and more and more. They prideful. And they poor. Most I hate a poor for a man that's that's poor and prideful. Look, Ecclesiastes 25 and 2. Ecclesiastes 25 and 2. And a woman that's prideful. Three sorts of men my soul hate him, and I am greatly offended at their life. 
a poor man that is proud. You know, you ain't got nothing, but you prideful. A poor man that's prideful, that's proud. A rich man that is a liar and an old adulterer that doted. See, but we here because this pride. You poor, most I hate you, and you prideful. You got big reason to be prideful about. But humble yourself before the Most High humble you. Look, go to uh, Ecclesiastes 10, the 10th chapter, and verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High. So you ain't with the Most High in the Mashiach El Shai. You rolling with the devil. You rolling with Satan. The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High. So this woman in pride, she ain't with rolling with the Most High. She rolling with Satan. Because they say the beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High and his heart is turned away from his maker. His mind is turned away from the Most High. You think about how he think about it. How you feel about it? I don't care. It's just my pride. My pride. Many people have died because of pride. And put to death because of pride. You know what it say? The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High. You ain't rolling with him. And his heart, which is your mind, is turned away from his maker. Your mind is turned away from the most high. You don't think about how you would feel about this. You can't do something to say, oh, the most high know my heart. Come on. When we gonna come off of that? <laughs> he do know. <laughs> That's why he said, verse 7, pride is hateful before the most high and man. Yeah, he know your heart. He know you prideful. And he say, Pride is hateful before the both side and man. And by both does one commit iniquity. See? Care about no pride, man. That's what the world is set up to have you be prideful. And have you go to hell right with them. God like always say you can go to hell any way you want to. Don't try and take me with you. You don't try and put me on the same page of you if you ain't going through these scriptures. We gonna we gonna we gonna come together on these scriptures, point blank. All of us. Or we not coming together at all. Proverbs eleven and twenty seven. He that diligently seeketh good, which is keeping the laws, procureth favor. You want to be seeking good? You want to, you know, we just said, what's good? Probably, uh, Romans 7 and 12. The law is good. That's why he says, he that diligently seeketh good, procureth favor. See? Favor from who? Favor from the Most High. But he that seeketh mischief, you want to you want to deal with some mischief, is it shall come upon him unto him. So I'll tell you most I created evil for those that you want to draw evil to you. It's gonna come upon you. That's what I said. It but he that seeketh mischief, you want to try and be sneaky and conniving and doing mischief, mischievous things, it shall come upon him. It's gonna come upon you. That's why. Uh, Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. So we got to know how to operate in these vessels, these rental vessels, mortal bodies that the Most High has allowed us to have at this time. It says Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Do you study the law? You don't even know how to rebuke Satan. You don't know, how to, you don't know the law. That's what my second shot used every time. He went to the law to rebuke Satan when he was weak. Every single time. Then he had to leave him alone. 
See, thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do. Not just hear it, not just read it, but do according to all that is written therein. You got to do it. That's some action. You got to show forth some action. And when you do this, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. See, all success is not good. Like they say, all money is not good. Yeah. But you meditate on these scriptures, you better meditate on the law of the most high and what's right and wrong. And you observe it and do it. Not just hear it and not do it, but you got to do it. Then you shall be prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. It says, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. I don't get a spit of fear. Neither be thou dismayed. For the most high thy power is with thee. Whithersoever thou goest, wherever you go, he's going to be with you. And make you prosperous and have good success. That's what we're talking about. That's what it's all about. Micah 7 and 5. The book of Micah 7 and 5. It says, trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Somebody's leading you. Better beware of it. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. You know what that's saying, brothers and sisters? That a man don't have to tell a woman everything about his business. Keep the doors of thy mouth. What's the doors of your mouth? Is what? Your lips. You open up your mouth to what? Talk. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. So women shouldn't be want to be nosy to know everything that a man is doing. But he tell you, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. See? But a righteous man going to be doing what he can do that's righteous anyway. But a woman going to have feelings of something that's contrary to righteousness, then you roll it with Satan. Rolling with evil. You shouldn't want to know everything that what most I call men, so he, he, he gonna call women to take the place of the men or to be right there with the men. And what we gotta deal with and try to bring this kingdom together with everyone. Like he said, go through the city and set a mark upon the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. That's what he said. That's what we read. So certain things that a man has got to deal with, the woman shouldn't even be concerned about. You have your job to do. That's why it says, you older than the women that's younger than you, teach them. So they don't be out there bugging out, wigging out, doing, doing crazy stuff. Spend time dealing with them. We read about daughters. You got you to you do what you got to do. Make sure that We follow the way of the Most High so that this works in our lives. Ecclesiastes 26. And 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Most High. You know? A silent and loving woman. I mean, a woman has got a lot of jaw jacket talking blah, 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 all the time, talking in a man's, you know, some things. It's not talking about just speaking, but it means silent. Man. She's not all voices over the man. Voices over the man. A silent and loving, she's loving. She's keeping the commandments of the Most High. She's in order. 
a silent and loving woman is a gift of the most high. a gift of the most high. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Well instructed. Remember, fools hate instruction. You can't tell them nothing. You're a fool. Or you fools if it's more than one. Fools hate instruction. Remember? A shamefaced and faithful woman to a man is a double grace. And her continent mind cannot be valued. Hear that? Her continent mind cannot be valued. Because she's going to be virtuous. Make a man's life double. A shamefaced and faithful wife, faithful woman, is a double grace. And her continent mind cannot be valued. As the sun, when it rises in the high heavens, like the sun comes in the east and rises in the high heavens, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. See? That's a job in itself right there. Besides teaching the young women and the, and the daughters and so forth, the ordering of her house. Look, but also, it tells you in verse 7, an evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He didn't have hold of her as, as though he held a scorpion. Dang. The evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. And you got a hold of her as though you held a scorpion. You know, a scorpion will sting with that tail and kill you. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haunty looks and eyelids, blatting them eyes at you, looking at you a certain way, smiling at you. Say, uh, the whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids, blinking them eyes at you a certain way. So if that daughter be shameless, you will put some order into your daughter. She's shameless. Keep her in straightly. She's shameless. Don't let her be having her way. Well, you got to know. Keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through over much liberty. Let her do whatever she want to do. And she's going to abuse herself over much, over much liberty. And she's going to make you sad. It brings shame to you. Watch over an impudent eye. <coughs> and marvel not if she trespass against thee. You don't be thinking of if she trespasses against you. Do, do exactly what you tell her not to do. She will open her mouth. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain. This, this, this description is deep. Open her mouth to a thirsty traveler when he traveler, he's thirsty. Sun beating down on him. He find fountain of water. That's how they say a woman go, she, she gonna open her mouth. <clears throat> and that water ain't telling no water. And drink of every water near her. That's deep. And drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every